With the results of NXT TakeOver in your house, I can proudly say that Adam Cole is a 370 day plus NXT Champion. And just last week, he became the longest reigning NXT Champion of all time. We don't see a whole lot of guys coming to NXT as a top dog. WWE has signed names from every major promotion in the world, and no one has seemed to rise to the top, or honestly just begin at the top, like Adam Cole. So today, I kind of just want to talk about his historic reign as NXT Champion, and maybe why he might just be the best NXT Champion of all time. That's a far-fetched statement, but it might just be true. At the third annual TakeOver Brooklyn, Drew McIntyre beat Bobby Roode and won the quickest pushes I've ever seen from a guy debuting to the NXT title. This was McIntyre's moment. He grinded around the wrestling world for years just to get back to the WWE and this was the prize that he was seeking for. But Adam Cole said, F no, big fella. He just straight up bashed this man's head in. Alongside other recent Ring of Honor recruits, Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish, why is there so many people in WWE named Bobby? There's already three. My wrestling name should be Bob. Bobby Mac. Mac Bob. The Bobster. We'll worry about that later. But honestly, he had a great debut, even though a lot of internet rumors and the fact that Britt Baker was kind of like, was seen in the crowd. Plus the crowd losing their when Cole came spreading from the back tunnel of the arena, it might have hindered the moment a little bit, not gonna lie. But I mean, it was still the debut of the two-time ROH champion, a former leader of the Bullet Club, in a WWE ring. And he's attacking the top champion of the brand. Whoa, bro. Talk your at him. Cole instantly became the biggest heel on the brand and started the best faction, in my opinion, since a new day in the Shield, the Undisputed Era, a group of former Ring of Honor stars that were taking over the WWE. Cole would enter various feuds, including against Aleister Black, Kashi Ozono, AOP, Sanity, and eventually he became the first ever North American champion at TakeOver New Orleans. After some successful defenses, he eventually dropped the title to Ricochet, and he had his sights now on the big prize. After winning a fatal five way, that's a lot of people, bro. Defeating the likes of Velveteen Dream, Matt Riddle, Alistair Black, and Ricochet, Cole made his first big attempt to capture the vacant title at TakeOver New York, even though he kind of lost to Johnny Gargano in a really great two out of three falls match. Honestly, I wanted Adam to win that, but he did get another shot at TakeOver 25 at their 25th anniversary show, where he beat Johnny Wrestling, winning the third brand's most coveted prize. Cole's first title defense came at TakeOver Toronto, where he beat Johnny Gargano again in another 2 out of 3 falls match, but honestly, given the carnage that happened in this match, not gonna lie, we're gonna call it three stages of hell. That was brutal. Did you see the, the steel cage part? Whew! Good God! Yeah, it's three stages, bro. It's just three stages. In between his next big pay-per-view title defense, Cole put a title on the line four different times, with only two of them being on NXT. Oh, he's a traveling dude. He making moves. In September, after winning the breakout tournament, Jordan Miles, better known as ACH, better known as a little controversial, um, yeah, th there was that moment. ACH challenged for the title, but was unsuccessful. Even though they've both been wrestling for about the same amount of time, the match really had that unlikely rookie versus Grizzle veteran storyline, and it was sold completely. Kind of like when the NWA champion goes into different territories with his title, trying to defend against like the top guy of that brand. It was kind of like that. That was Adam Cole versus ACH. I put some respect on your name, bro. I got you. Don't forget the super bitch. Fuck you. Next, Cole probably wrestled his most technical bout against the newly drafted SmackDown star, Matt Riddle. This was a debut of NXT on the USA Network, and besides the Miles match, this was probably his most underrated defense. 20 minutes of bare feet and sunrises from Panama, Adam Cole reigned supreme. Oh, but these next two, oh, it gets interesting, because he wasn't even on NXT for that. Not even a takeover. We went to Raw and SmackDown, brother. Adam Cole was a man with a giant yellow target around his waist as he took on two of the biggest stars in recent history of WWE on Raw and SmackDown. During the NXT Invasion angle leading into Survivor Series, Seth Rollins wanted to make a statement to Triple H by stealing the Yellow Brand's top title. Now, the match was good. I mean, like, real good. It was getting great. And honestly, I kind of thought Seth Rollins was going to win. Hands down, my favorite Rollins match of 2019. But just as Rollins was about to go for the curb stomp, or back in them days, the stomp. Man, I'm glad they changed it. The stop. I'm gonna use the stop. Mm. He was attacked by the Undisputed Era. So Seth won by DQ, but Adam Cole retained. Jesus Christ, Roddy. What? <laughs> How do you get your body up that high? That's an, that's an elevated knee that should have led you to the UFC. What the heck? But next, SmackDown. Adam Cole versus the most lovable vegan in the world. 
Daniel Bryan. After some teasing that Bryan was gonna be facing Triple H, and Shawn Michaels literally gave me a heart attack as he started to take off his jacket just to put it back on. God. Sean! Cole stepped up to the plate and they put on a barn burner. Unlike the Rollins match, Cole retained this one by pinfall. He pinned a five-time world champion. Clean! Clean! He beat a WrestleMania main event, sir. Clean! Ooh, 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 ooh. That's a career boost right off the bat. Him, the rest of the Undisputed Era, and the NXT roster laid waste going into Survivor Series. And he didn't defend on Saturday's TakeOver War Games, but on Survivor Series. Pete Dunne, who just won a triple threat, making him the number one contender the night prior, and in one of the big championship matches of that night, Colin Dunn honestly had the best match of the night, if you ask me. I mean, it was good. Showcasing an athletic, hard-hitting, finger-snapping brawl. For anyone that was unfamiliar with these two, they had a thrilling match, including a Panama Sunrise on the apron of the ring. That's the hardest part, if you didn't know. Next up, Cole's most decorated challenger says Daniel Bryan, the Prince. Finn Balor. Uh, he should have worn the demon paint. He always wins with that. What? Come on. Balor won a triple threat himself to actually get a title shot in December of 2019. And for a lot of people, including myself, it seemed like he was probably going to be the guy to be the new champion. But the return of Johnny Gargano distracted Balor and gave Adam Cole another great title defense under his belt, beating the first ever Universal Champion. Now, it's 2020, and Adam didn't even defend his title the night before the Royal Rumble because that was the World's Collide event. The Undisputed Era took on Imperium. Okay, let's not talk about the finish of that match. They lost. But he was shortly entering into a brand new feud for taking for Portland against Tommaso Ciampa. Most of Cole's defenses put a hard emphasis on Cole being the man to beat, that Cole cheats to win, that Cole was the final boss of NXT. But for the first time, the story wasn't really about him. Honestly, anyone could have been the champion. But for this, this was about Ciampa's storybook ending, reclaiming the title that he never lost. There was so much emphasis on Tommaso Ciampa for this match. I know I was convinced that Goldie was definitely going back home, but Nope. I mean, I could tell you it was a good match, it was thrilling, it was the greatest spectacle in sports entertainment history, but none of these matches have been bad! It almost just seems like Adam Cole's a great professional wrestler that seems to have top-notch chemistry with everyone that he's in the ring with. But I don't know. Finally, we have his last two recent defenses against the Velveteen Dream. Since Dream returned from injury, he's inserted himself in the main event scene. Since TakeOver Tampa was canceled because, you know, Corona. The match happened on the May 6th episode on Wednesday night. A tad more green than Cole, Velveteen tends to actually hold his weight against most opponents. Another Undisputed Era interference and also Dexter Loomis. He's so weird. Like, I don't know if I like him or if I hate him. I'm just a little creeped out. I, I really don't know how to feel about him. I'm just like, ugh. Cole kept the championship and actually beat Finn Balor's reign to become the longest reigning NXT champion of all time. Now today, Cole just surpassed the year mark only a week ago, holding that title without failure to retain since TakeOver 25. He also recently retained his NXT championship again against Velveteen Dream at TakeOver In Your House. And now the big question is, who can beat this guy? Cole has literally beat every valuable contender on the roster, with the exception of a few, I guess. Will it be Karrion Cross? Will it be the North American champion Keith Lee? Damian Priest, or maybe Dexter. Every title match Cole has been in so far has averaged over four stars, and yeah, all his contenders have been super valuable performers and top quality, but it does take two to Fandango. There's also been a few murmurs going around that he may actually be leaving WWE, but honestly, I just can't see that happening. On the push that that guy is on right now, himself alongside Undisputed Era could have the best call up in NXT history. And with the charisma and ability that he possessed, there's no doubt in my mind that he will be a future WWE or Universal Champion. I'm not even the biggest Adam Cole fan to be honest, but his reign has just been absolutely phenomenal. I mean, you just saw it yourself. He might just be the best NXT Champion of all time. That's undisputed. We going up like a thousand. I'm a flesh just like a muscle man Malcolm. Uh, we going up like a thousand. I'm a flesh just like a muscle man Malcolm. Uh, when it just like one, two, three. If you like the channel, this will squeeze. If you like the channel, this will squeeze. If you like the channel, this will squeeze.